just a real quick disclaimer. I don't redstone very much. I might do simple redstone, but what you're going to see next is not complex, but it'll get the job done. Hello and welcome to the next episode on Cornerstone Season 2. As I mentioned in the last episode, we needed to do a little bit of automation behind Azaleas. So today I'm gonna make a bone meal farm from scratch. I'm not gonna look at anybody else's design. I did poke my head at somebody else just to get ideas, but what you see now is gonna be kind of out of my head and then we'll finish and make it more performant with the other ideas in my head. But like I said, I'm not that great of redstone, but we're gonna make it simple and it's gonna work. So let's get started. All right, and for science, I am gonna tell you everything that I have found out about moss blocks. And the first thing to start off is if you're bone mill a moss block, what will I actually convert down below or above? And we'll get to that in a second. But anyways, the list is stone, granite, polished granite, diorite, polished diorite, andesite, polished andesite, tough, deep slate, cave vines, I mean, yeah, glow berries. Anyways, uh, it next is going to be uh, dirt, which, well, you know, that converted. Grass block, pozzel, coarse dirt, mycelium, and rooted dirt. Guys, I'm trying to record here. And so, if you actually bone mill a moss block, what you'll get is the short grass, the tall grass, moss carpet, an azalea, and the flowering azalea. And here's kind of the fun part about this. Every single one of these, if we put it through a composter, actually end up as bone mill. All right, one of the things that we need to know is how much area will a bone mill dispenser into a moss block actually end up going? So let's do a little experiment here. And so that's the first experiment. But what I want to do is do this multiple times. And you actually have to clear off that one because you can't bone mill after that. So I just want to run this probably, I don't know, a couple of times without actually breaking stuff. <laughs> and see how far it is. It is pretty safe to say that we're looking at a seven by seven. So that's centered on this thing. So it's three on either direction from the moss block not the dispenser. And one thing I did notice is that the corners never, ever, ever get bone mill. So that's kind of an interesting one, but no biggie, it's okay. And another observation that I noticed is that underneath any of these, it will not convert anything. So there's a button there, dispenser and moss block. Those will never happen. So that's another interesting thing I need to see if we can get rid of. Next thing that we need to know is how far down it'll actually go. So we noticed um, from that experiment over there that we cannot place blocks under here. So I kind of just did a spiral for now, but let's see here. And it helps that I put the bone mill in. Yep, all experiments need something to happen. Okay, okay. Okay, it's pretty safe to say that from the moss block goes down one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm presuming it goes up, but we really don't care about that one. So it looks like it is a seven by seven by probably 11 centered on the moss block. And to make it easier, it's three out from the block and one, two, three, four, five down from the moss block. And here's what I'm thinking. So if we can convert any of these, what's the one thing that we can actually create here? And it's not a cobblestone generator, but it's a stone generator. So if we kind of run over here to some of my experiments, so we can't do the side by side style because that will actually produce cobble. So we're gonna have to run the lava on top. All right, one last experiment. So, there's two different ways we can do the water. One on the outside with the lava on top, and then another one, and by the way, there's only two sources, so the water has to run underneath in order for it to form the stone. And then another one, 
get around the other side where there's all water sources on the, the side that forms the stone in the middle, but we got to push it out and we got to push it up and out. This one's a little bit more complicated, obviously, but here's what I found is that if we run this one with just four items in it, A, the water doesn't form over here and it starts putting cobble in every once in a while, which isn't good. Yeah, you see in the middles it starts forming cobble and then the water doesn't run here. So the cool thing about this one is if we actually put one more in, then it starts running pretty good. Let's clear all this stuff up real quick. So if we just put five in there and I kind of cleared everything up and start this. Go ahead and remove that just as a fluke. It looks like the timing for five gives enough time for the water to run underneath and then form out. All right, so that one actually seems pretty good. So I can see a potential for this one screwing up. Um, so I made another one that I think so far is flawless. So what I've done, same experiment, I put four in here and it seems that the water only forms. Yeah, sometimes there's sometimes. But we stop it here and put one more in here. Seems pretty much flawless. All right, with this one cleared out and we got five in there. Just perfect timing so that the lava falls down and then pushes it out. And from what I've seen, I I have never seen this one screw up even once. So the ultimate question is, which one are we going to go with? Both need a timing of five in order to work. So this one isn't any quicker. You can't run it quicker because the water just needs time to run underneath. This one, unfortunately, the lava has to fall two blocks, but it's flawless. This is not broken. So if you're going to do this for yourself, it just depends on resources. So you're going to need double the amount of pistons, double the amount of repeaters and a little bit more redstone in order to run this one. Um, I did notice that I have to run this one on a delay. Uh, let's show you that real quick. All right, I am on a single player and I'm running just one delay on here. And that seems enough that the bottom piston can push up and that one's delayed just enough so that it pushes. I think on a multiplayer server, I need to adjust this as one out. So you'll have to mess with that if you're gonna replicate this for yourself. Uh, enough of me actually experimenting. Let's actually get on the Cornerstone server and do something. And here's what I got so far. So I made just a single pusher um, just to see how efficient it is. And so basically the pistons are right. Oh, you can't even see them. They're right there that push this way. And then since these are immovable, it doesn't push any further. And what I found out is that I have up there, let's see here, let's get a little further back. I have a full chest with two hoppers and then the dispenser. And what I found out is if I fill those with bone mill, what I get out of it is the full chest, the two hoppers, the dispenser and what was left over was that. So I made a net of plus two stacks of bone mill. Well, at least it didn't, didn't go negative, which is good. So what I want to do is I'm going to rip this down. I I really don't want this huge thing sticking out. So I'm going to bring it down to the ground and probably push it back a little so I can put a building over it. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. And then I am going to do pushing from every single side so that this stuff gets converted quicker so that the bone mill is more efficient. And in case you're saying to yourself, no, don't tear down. Well, I've already run this thing and got 
basically two shulker boxes of everything that I need for that thing so that we can actually eventually, one of these days, finish up that hill. Oh yeah, look at this. I got it done, I got it done. This took a lot of fiddling around with, but I got this thing about as performant as my skill levels can get. Well, let's go down and take a look at it. And up here, I've been kind of getting an idea of a house. Ooh, this is gonna be a large house. It may have to be a single story, but we'll get into that later on. Let's go down and it all starts with an etho hopper clock. And I have nine sticks in this thing. And one of the problems that I ran into is that, you know, the pistons would create stone and push the stone in, but there would be a lot of moss blocks left still. And, you know, then with bone mill and it wasn't as efficient as I wanted it to. So what I'm doing is I'm actually running the pistons off of both sides. So that's why I'm running nine sticks instead of, well, five is the minimum that I could have ran before running it off of just one side. So I decided to double it and I was actually able to remove one stick just to make it a little bit more performant. But I'm firing the pistons off of both sides of the clock. So let's go take a look at that real quick. So if this one fires, it goes up here and fires that one and that one simultaneously. They're on the same exact delay from this one here. And I got it just on a little bit of delay there. And then it goes and fires these here too. And so I actually came up on my own, didn't look at anybody else's. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Um, another circuit. So what happens is that this line goes through the target blocks and pushes this one up. And since observers have a two tick delay, then it goes through this one and fires those. So what happens is the lava falls, form stone where you see it right now. These pistons go up and two ticks later, these ones fire. It's perfect timing. Before, I think I showed you, I had a repeater on there and I had to mess with the timings in order to get with this one to fire directly after that one. So I am proud of this circuit right here. It actually works really good. And so let's actually, before we go up, I'll show you down here. So what happens is I'm actually, I got uh, dispensers dispensing water buckets on all four corners. So basically all this stuff ends up in the middle, kind of in a plus sign. So I just followed suit and put hopper mine carts. The hoppers are sucking it up, putting it into composters. This is pushing it in, and then where it's going is into this firing circuit and is going up and getting put back in the system. So let's go take a look at that. So I think this circuit here is actually probably the easiest to understand. It just took a little bit to, you know, figure out that I needed to fire it off of both sides. So there's another circuit right here that goes and fires everything off else and it's firing off of one. The cool thing is, is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oops, 13, 14, 15. So right there, that other one doesn't have en enough redstone strength to go. But the cool thing is, is this one does. So let's go take a look at that real quick. And so since I think I said it ended on that one or this one, I think it was that one. So this other side of the circuit has a repeater here and then everything goes fine. So up here, what we're doing is I'll go through this circuit first. So what we're doing is we're splitting it off and we're sending it through two circuits. So one, this repeater is just to, you know, strengthen it up and get be able to get to the other sides. And then this circuit is enough to delay it. So what happens is on this one right here, is we're firing the dispensers to put out the you know the water and then just a little bit later i am firing it again to suck it back in and this timing right here on all three of the or all four of these is the quickest that i can dispense it out and pull it back in and still get all the stuff kind of moved to the center and then this one up here this circuit here so what it does is it fires here i'll come down here real quick so we got a line right here. It goes through this observer. This observer goes, uh, activates that. We got a dispenser with bone mill in it and it fires against that and converts as much stone as it can. And then we have another circuit that's going here on a bit of delay that fires that observer. And that observer basically fires that piston and it goes down and crushes because sometimes we get some grass on top of here or in sometimes some azaleas. So that's gotta be crushed. And unfortunately some of the stuff lands on there but I'm not overly worried about that. So let's go turn this thing on. Oh, and then this circuit is literally just to lock right 
there. It's to kind of lock this so that the clock stops. So let's turn this on and take a look at it. Okay, so right here's the beginning. So bone mill, pistons fire. Oh, it just happens so much, but pistons fire, bone mill, water goes out, pistons fire again, and every once in a while just one block remains. I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah, see, a lot of times it's just, uh, it clears the duck. So fire the pistons. And it looks like I actually picked that up. Yep. So this is about as good as I can get it. And this thing actually doubles the bone mill. The bone mill that I have in here. So if I were to do that five minutes later, I will have double the amount of bone mill. So, blam. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. I will never ever use that much bone mill. I am super happy. And then once basically, you know, this one fills up and then that fills up and that fills up, it will actually start overflowing over into, I just fell. It'll start overflowing into this chest here. I am super happy with this whole thing. I'm probably going to come up with a tutorial on this. I even thought about it a one minute farm tutorial, but this is kind of big to get through. I mean, I've been speaking for six minutes already, just telling you guys this, but yeah, I am super happy about this, but we need to get a building on top of this. I've got a layout here, but oosh, this thing is just a gargantuan house. I don't think I want to deal with a roof this big, but we'll see what happens. I want to do that next. Well, I calculated out. This thing will actually do 768 bone mill an hour. Now, you could scale this as much as you want, and that's what most people do in order to get those fancy numbers to bring in the viewers, but not too bad for one single unit. Yeah, so I've actually got an idea of kind of a building here. It's not going to be all stone. I'm just kind of using this as a representation. But what I'm thinking is a porch here, and then that way the house starts here and ends on that one there. So basically there'll be a porch that kind of wraps around all the way over here. And then this one, I don't think there'll be a porch here, but we'll end it here. So actually, no, we won't. So anyways, the house will be there. Well, I still got to fiddle around with it, but I am running out of time. And let me sleep over here real quick. So yep, I'm gonna wrap this up here. I have a problem with biting off more stuff. I want this building to be super nice looking, so I want to take some time. So I'm just gonna cut this video here. It is actually good enough. I had so much fun putting this together and fiddling around with circuits and stuff and trying to figure it all out. I actually think I did a good job. I learned about target blocks. I've never dealt with those figured out a really good circuit here and kind of just trimmed all this stuff up to the point where it's not an utter mess. Still love to do something better here, but it works. I'm super happy. So anyways, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here. If you enjoyed this content, smash that like button. And if you want to be notified when I actually do this building or other stuff, subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. And until next time, see ya.